You still don't have kids? Can't even show off a grandkid? What a failure. While sitting on a park bench, taking a brief break, a woman approached and started talking to me. That condescending look in her eyes and her tone of voice. No doubt, it was her. Surprised by the sudden reunion, I was at a loss for words. But why would she bring up the topic of kids so suddenly? While hiding my confusion, I told the woman the truth. My kid is right over there. The moment I said that, her eyes widened in shock. My name is Emily, 37 years old. Now I'm married with kids and living a happy life, but I've overcome various difficulties to get here. The story goes back to when I was in high school. I had a boyfriend named Jake. I met Jake during my freshman year of high school. As a child, I wasn't very good at talking to people. Because of this, I couldn't fit in well and had few friends. It was lonely. I often wondered if things would have been different if I were more sociable. Since elementary school, I've been prone to overthinking. When I got to middle school, I resolved to be more outgoing and make lots of friends. I set this goal before graduating from elementary school, but ultimately, I didn't achieve it. I thought if I didn't change in high school, I'd be like this for life. Knowing I'd be separated from my friends in high school, I felt even more pressure to change. However, my personality didn't change in high school. While everyone else was making new friends and having fun, I was alone in a corner of the classroom. I'd either be reading books or pretending to sleep. I just kept to myself all the time. I remember crying at home many times because I felt so miserable. Then one day, something happened that would greatly change my life. It was during one of the few seat changes that occur each year. It seems the method of drawing lots for seat changes is the same in every school. Well, I thought my life wouldn't change much with a seat change, and I was prepared to continue living alone. Without much expectation or anxiety, I moved my desk to the spot indicated by the lottery, and there was Jake sitting next to me. Hey, Emily. Nice to meet you. Uh, yeah. Nice to meet you too. Jake, who hadn't interacted much with me, kindly spoke to me. Originally, I had the impression that Jake was kind to everyone, so I felt relieved that I wasn't an exception. But I thought this would probably be it. We didn't go to the same middle school or have common hobbies. I figured we'd only talk if there was some business to attend to. However, my expectation was completely wrong. Surprisingly, Jake started actively talking to me. At first, it was just trivial conversations, but as days went by, the topics became more diverse. I, who used to be nervous talking with Jake, could now talk to him as a friend. I never imagined this would happen. I savored the joy of having made a new friend. It might sound exaggerated, but friends were that special to me. Then, a year later, I was in my sophomore year of high school. And thankfully, Jake was in the same class. Then one day, suddenly, Jake confessed his feelings to me. I never dreamed of being confessed to and was bewildered. I've always liked you. It's no surprise you're shocked. But, I've been hoping we could be together. Um, but I didn't feel any disgust. Rather, I wondered if it was really okay for someone like me to be his girlfriend. Is it really okay for me to be your girlfriend? Don't say that. I want it to be you, Emily. But I won't force you. Jake said, looking down, continuing to express his feelings. Receiving his sentiments, I responded. I would be happy to be with you, Jake. Let's do this. Really, that makes me so happy. Jake's face brightened with joy. Since starting to date Jake, my life changed significantly. Though I always walked to and from school alone, then I would see Jake by my side. Instead of staying in on weekends, I had more fulfilling times because Jake would take me out. I didn't know if Jake was thinking about our future together. 
but at least I wanted to walk through life with him. I liked him that much. As time went on, we visited each other's homes more often. So, I got to know Jake's family, and he got to know mine. Every time he came over, I saw him getting along well with my family. Jake's parents thought very highly of me. My parents, too, were very positive. Never thought you'd date such a good kid. I'm surprised. Can't believe you snagged such a great guy. My parents knew I was shy. So, when I told them I had a boyfriend, they were quite surprised. Time passed, and Jake and I graduated from high school. I went to a local university's economics department, while Jake, wanting to become a doctor, went to medical school. He had always spoken about wanting to be a doctor, and he was then taking the first step toward his dream. I deeply respected him for that. Even though we went to different universities, we didn't break up. Instead, we made a conscious effort to see each other when we could. Jake, being focused on becoming a doctor, seemed busy with studies and training. Time flew, and I graduated from university. Then, I got a job at a local company. By this time, both Jake and I were living on our own, visiting each other's places when we had time. Two years later, Jake graduated and finally achieved his dream of becoming a doctor. Another two years passed. When both of our careers had stabilized, Jake proposed to me. I want to be with you forever. Will you marry me? Of course. I, who had always envisioned a future with Jake, would never refuse his proposal. I happily accepted. The thought of being with Jake forever felt like a dream. While savoring the happiness of being proposed to, I thought about our future life together. Even after we got engaged, our closeness remained the same. Repairing for the marriage registration and wedding was tough, but we managed it by helping each other. I relished the joy of being able to marry Jake. I was so glad to be marrying Jake. But then, unexpectedly, my life took a drastic turn. Hey, Emily. Can we just forget about getting married? What? I was taken aback by the sudden suggestion. What do you mean? I mean, let's call off the engagement. Why? I couldn't understand why Jake wanted to call off the engagement. Whether I had done something wrong or he had grown to dislike me. It's hard to accept this all of a sudden. We've already met each other's families and progressed with the preparations. How can we call off the engagement now? I can't accept this. I'm really sorry. I'll take responsibility and pay compensation. But I just can't marry you, Emily. I'm truly sorry. I know an apology isn't enough, but sorry. What's the reason? I can't tell you. We had been dating since high school, promising each other a future and thinking of building a happy home together. So why? Why can't you tell me? It's just not possible. No matter how much I asked, Jake only apologized. Eventually, I caved, and the engagement was called off. Jake had mentioned paying a settlement, but I never accepted it. I wanted to forget about him as soon as possible. After being informed of the broken engagement, I immediately told my parents. Both were as sad as if it were their own sorrow, only making me feel more apologetic. Why did Jake want to call off the engagement? Did he dislike me, or was there someone else he loved? Had I been the only one who thought we were happy together? No matter how much I pondered, I couldn't find the answer with Jake saying nothing. It was agonizing to speculate alone. For a while, I went through my days without feeling alive, unable to focus on work or anything I liked. However, six months later, I unexpectedly learned why Jake had called off the engagement. One day, told by my mom there was something she needed to discuss, I went home and was greeted by my sister, Sarah, smirking maliciously, which was unusual. Oh, you actually came. Well, yay. Mom called me. But why are you here? Why can't I be? 
This is also my parents' house, isn't it? I don't need to explain myself to you. Besides, I have something I want to report. So I decided to come. Something you want to report? What could she possibly want to announce that required calling me here? Noticing my concern, Sarah smirked again and pressed on. You'll be happy to hear it. Just wait and see. With that, Sarah went back to the living room. I couldn't trust what Sarah said. She claimed it would be something I'd be happy about. But it was probably a lie. A wave of anxiety overwhelmed me, and I wanted to leave right then and there. It had been a long time since our whole family gathered around the dining table. Usually, it was a joyful atmosphere, but Sarah's presence made the air much heavier. Yet, Sarah seemed unfazed, continuing to talk about whatever she pleased. Despite living together for years, I still couldn't understand what was going for Sarah's mind. It was unsettling. Ah, uh, right. I'll just say it. During the meal, Sarah started talking in a cheerful tone. The moment she spoke, I felt suffocated. I tried to calm myself and listen to her. I'm getting married. Married? Yeah, to Jake. What? I couldn't believe my ears. That couldn't be true. Wait, Jake. Yeah, Jake. The Jake, my ex-fiancé. Yes, your ex-fiancé, Jake. Sarah answered without any hint of guilt. Launching at my parents, I could tell they were speechless. However, Sarah, without changing her expression, cheerfully continued discussing the marriage registration and wedding plans. I'm seriously so happy marrying Jake. It feels like finally, you know, because of someone, things couldn't move forward. Someone. Oh, you're asking, it's you. Convincing Jake was really tough. You deliberately stole her fiancé. Stop saying stole. Ultimately, Jake chose me. I didn't do anything wrong, right? If anyone, it's Emily who got dumped by Jake, I think. Sarah was inapologetic, and our parents were furious. I couldn't grasp the situation and kept repeating the same words. How could you do this? Marriage is supposed to be joyful, but not in your case. Saying you struggled to persuade him means you had practically forced him, didn't you? Come on, don't make it sound so bad. Sure, I knew Jake and Emily were going to get married. But like I said, Jake chose me in the end. If you want to point out something bad about me, I can't think of anything. You are unbelievable. I couldn't respond. The only thing that echoed in my mind was Sarah's shrill laughter. Sarah had always disliked me from the beginning. Even before I started kindergarten, she clearly told me, you shouldn't have been born. As I grew up, Sarah never changed her stance. If you weren't born, I could have everything to myself. All the food, the toys, everything. But that's not something I can help with. Shut up. Sarah seemed to only see me as an outlet for her stress. She would take her anger out on me to feel better. Even if she was in a good mood, seeing me would instantly sour it. I was feeling good, but seeing your face just ruins it. It's the worst. I don't know what to say to that. That's what annoys me about you. Always talking back. Sarah is the one taking offense on her own. It's not something I can fix. So, could you not snap at me too? It makes me feel bad as well. That's what I mean. Stop talking back. It's annoying. But Sarah did more than just hurl hurtful words. She regularly shifted the blame for her misdeeds onto me. She would immediately tattle to our parents, playing the victim. Although they knew I hadn't done anything and scolded Sarah many times, she never stopped making me out to be the villain. There were instances of her hiding my things or ruining my homework and important papers, forcing me to apologize to teachers multiple times. Of course, I hated Sarah. I didn't want to be in the same space as her, but I couldn't always have my way. I lived under her influence until I moved out to live on my own. However, there was a time when Sarah seemed a bit nicer. That was when I started dating Jake. 
When Jake first visited our home, Sarah's mood noticeably improved. Well, Emily's boyfriend? He's handsome. Well, that's... That's great, Emily. Your first boyfriend, right? Well, yeah. Sarah's mood didn't change after that. She just kept alternating her attention between me and Jake, bombarding us with questions. On another day, Sarah's mood instantly improved upon seeing Jake, and she loudly welcomed him. I realized Sarah liked Jake, and it made me feel sick. Hey, your boyfriend is super handsome. Why is he dating you? I don't know. By the way, is it true he wants to be a doctor? Is he smart? He's smart. He even helps me with my studies. He's always said he wanted to be a doctor. Sarah listened to me and smirked suspiciously. Well, which university is he aiming for? I don't know. Something medical? As his girlfriend, you don't know which university he's aiming for. Aren't you a failure as a girlfriend? I knew, but I just didn't want to tell Sarah. She had no way of knowing the truth and kept provoking me. She must have wanted to say she's the right woman for Jake. Yay, yeah, yay. Yeah. Think whatever you want. You really annoy me. Don't get cocky. Sarah, seemingly displeased with my attitude, effortlessly threw hurtful words at me. Her attempts to appeal to Jake knew no bounds. Listening to his private life, touching him, her excessive behavior continued unabated. Jake seemed troubled too, but all I could do was apologize to him for Sarah's actions. Time passed, and Jake stopped visiting our house. Maybe that was where Sarah's involvement should have ended. But who would have thought Jake broke off our engagement to marry Sarah? No matter how much I tried to make sense of it, I couldn't keep up. Seeing me like this, Sarah laughed out loud again. Man, marrying Jake is the best. Do you really think this is okay? To take someone's fiancé like that? Yeah, so what's wrong with that? I don't know how Emily feels, but I'm on top of the world. I get to marry the man I love. Oh, sorry, shouldn't say that in front of someone who got dumped. Sarah continued to taunt me. While my parents were still angry, I had no energy left to respond. I just felt the tears rolling down my cheeks. Ah, uh, are you crying? That's not cute, you know. Oh, but you weren't cute to begin with. Sarah, just get out, now. You're no family of mine. Don't ever show your face here again. How mean. I just came to make a happy announcement. Despite my parents' rage trying to kick her out, Sarah just laughed. I didn't want to see Sarah's face ever again. But there was one last thing I needed to ask. Hey, why did you choose Jake? You mean, why I chose Jake? Yeah, why go out of your way to choose someone else's fiancé? That was the last thing I wanted to know. The reason she chose Jake. I knew it would be messy, but I was genuinely curious about her reasoning. To my question, Sarah answered with glee. Because he's a doctor. What? Yay, because Jake became a doctor. I had my eye on him since I heard he wanted to be one. I got his social media info from him a while back. So he wrote something about becoming a doctor. So I thought I'd reach out, just on a whim. And he replied just like that. The rest is history. Maybe at first, Jake responded because Sarah was my sister but to go from there to marriage. What was he thinking? Perhaps he just got overwhelmed by Sarah's advances, but doing that at the expense of me, his fiancée at that time, also seems questionable. When I showed a bit of interest, he just fell for it. And to think, he always acts so composed. He's actually quite reserved, huh? That's terrible. You asked why Jake chose me, so I told you. Sarah laughed without remorse. Seeing this, our parents became even angrier. Do you even have a heart? What's that? You're so harsh. Harsh or not, you're a disgrace to be a daughter. I won't be attending your wedding. Don't you ever set foot in this house again. Dad then grabbed Sarah by the arm and forcibly dragged her outside. Hey, what are you doing? 
Even Sarah was taken aback by Did's actions. Though Mom and I were shocked, Sarah had taken things too far. I wished she would never appear before me again. Mom probably felt the same. That's why nobody stopped Dad. I'll be happy, just you wait. I'll have lots of kids, live in a nice house, and show you, Emily, just you watch, all alone. With those words, Sarah was thrown out of the house. Remembering her triumphant look towards me, my head ached. But this might finally sever ties with her. I felt somewhat relieved thinking that way. I realized it had been 10 years since that turmoil. My interaction with Sarah had ceased, and I was living a peaceful life, which made me happy. One day, I was sitting alone on a park bench, drinking coffee. In the cold season, the warm coffee was comforting. As I relaxed and let my mind wander, a woman approached me. Do you still have no kids? Can't even show off a grandkid? What a failure. I looked towards where the voice came from. A flood of unpleasant memories rushed back. The condescending look and tone of voice. She seemed much thinner than before, but it was undoubtedly Sarah. Shocked by the sudden reunion, I was speechless. Why would she suddenly bring up children? While hiding my confusion, I pointed to a child nearby and revealed the truth. My kid is right there. At that moment, I could see Sarah's eyes widen in shock. What? That can't be true. Aren't you single? A single person with a child? Well, I'm married. What? You're married? In fact, after Jake broke off our engagement, I married a colleague from my company. His name is Bob. Originally, Bob and I worked in different departments and knew each other to some extent. However, we got closer after his transfer, and it led to marriage. Shocked that I was married, Sarah stared at me in disbelief. But, you had your fiancé stolen by me. That's true, but there's no rule saying I couldn't marry someone else if it didn't work out with Jake, right? I married a colleague from work. I can't believe you caught a new man. You're shy, introverted, gloomy, and creepy. How come? Sarah couldn't believe I was married. She opened and closed her mouth, struggling to find words. Just so you know, I've shown our kids to dad and everyone. What about you? Weren't you going to have lots of kids with Jake and live in a nice house? Stop, my life is none of your business. It is related. You assumed I had no kids and started this. Why are you even here? Sarah didn't answer my question. Looking away, she seemed desperate to think of a response. But I didn't wait for her to reply, continuing to bombard her with questions. So, how are things going with Jake? Are you in touch with our parents? What are you doing now? Shut up. Just shut up. Can't answer. Maybe nothing is going well for you? Not getting along with Jake and no kids. No contact with our parents. I said, shut up. Sarah just kept repeating the same thing. Seeing her refuse to answer, I lost my patience. Well, if things were going well, you wouldn't react like this. You approach me to boast, right? Or maybe you and Jake couldn't have kids. Why would you say that? Sarah looked at me with disbelief. She probably wondered how I knew that she and Jake couldn't have children. Why? Because after the engagement, I did a bridal check with Jake. That's when we found out he couldn't have kids. I still loved him and was willing to marry him. I thought Jake would tell you before getting married. Didn't he? Or didn't you want to ask? I didn't know. I wasn't told. I... Always the same with you, never at fault. It's always been that way, pushing responsibility onto others, claiming you're not to blame. I don't know what you're thinking, but shouldn't a couple discuss having kids if they really want them? Did you even try anything? You had the energy to steal someone's fiancé. Quiet, quiet. What do you know about my feelings? You had Jake stolen from you. You shouldn't be happier than me. Sarah randed at me, trying to close the distance. But her gaunt appearance took away any sense of threat. 
It seemed she just couldn't stand seeing me happier than her. She continued with, Even though you had your fiancé stolen, and you can't possibly have kids, it's all in your head. She kept repeating the same statements, desperately refusing to accept reality. At that moment, I saw a small child running towards us from the corner of my eye. It was my daughter, Abby. Mom? Who is this person? Abby asked apprehensively about Sarah's identity. This person is my older sister. Wow, mom has a sister. Yes, but we had a fight and haven't spoken for years. Oh, I see. Abby then looked closely at Sarah. She then spoke again. Why didn't you tell me about her before? With a self-satisfied smile, I answered, not minding my pettiness. Because she used to make me out to be the bad guy. What? That's awful. At that, Sarah, who had been eyeing Abby enviously, suddenly spoke up. Hey, there's no need to say that in front of a child. I'm just stating the facts. I don't want her to think you're a good person. It's important to make it clear you're not. You know, stop making up weird things. Look, Abby, it's just your mom's sister. Nothing scary, right? Sarah tried to sound gentle as she approached Abby. But Abby, feeling weary, head behind me. Hey, you! Are you getting mad at a child now? I mean, it's rich coming from me, but you're really immature, you know? Shut up. You have no room to. What's going on? Just as our argument seemed to escalate again, a man's voice came from behind. Turning around, I saw Bob, my husband. That day, we had come to the park as a family of three, and Sarah had approached me while Bob was momentarily away. Um, who is this? It's Sarah. Oh. As soon as he heard Sarah's name, Bob's face visibly soured. Unaware, Sarah approached Bob with a plastered smile. Oh, you're Emily's husband. Well, you're pretty handsome. Why didn't you introduce me before? I didn't see the need to do so. Plus, I didn't want you bothering him. No one knows what you might do. Oh, come on. I'm Sarah, Emily's sister. Nice to meet you. Sarah continued with the same clawing tone she had used when she introduced herself to Jake. Bob, however, kept frowning and listened to her without changing his expression. I had told Bob about Sarah, how she stole my fiancé, and all the trouble she caused me since we were kids. Oh, how about we get together for a meal sometime? It's been a while since we met Emily. We should cherish this connection. I'll pass. Contrary to Sarah's tone, Bob firmly declined the invitation. Ah, uh, that's cold. Don't you think so, Emily? What? After all this time? Not at all. Again, I sensed that Sarah was targeting Bob, just like she did with Jake, my intuition screaming at me. At that moment, Bob stood protectively in front of Abby and me. I've heard everything about you from Emily. I don't know why you're here today, but please don't involve yourself with us anymore. Everything. Yes, exactly. How you stole her fiancé. How you've been harassing her since you were kids. How you lash out at Emily when you're in a bad mood and belittle her at every chance. Listening to all you've done brought me to tears. That's an exaggeration. But I haven't done anything wrong, have I? Jake chose me in the end, so we got married. That's all there is to it. You created the opportunity. Didn't you? Dropping her facade, Sarah began to show her true colors. Opportunity? What do you mean? Can you explain? It's possible that everything Emily said was a lie, right? Trusting such a woman. You must be foolish. Sure. Keep talking. So you did create the opportunity, right? Enough. It's all in the past. So why does it matter now? Oh, right. Should I call our parents and ask? When you came to announce your marriage, you talked about why you were getting married, right? They might remember. Maybe I can find Jake's contact in the old address book. Or should I ask on social media? 
I wasn't going to let her evade the conversation. I kept pressing Sarah desperately. But it wasn't just empty talk. I could ask our parents if needed, and Jake's contact information is in the address book. That, there's no need to go that far. There it is again. I'm tired of you spouting nonsense. You're embarrassing, you know? From the looks of it, you and Jake are fighting or divorced, right? You don't seem happy at all. How do you know that? It's obvious. Things aren't going well with Jake, are they? Resigned to my words, Sarah started to speak quietly about what had happened. Apparently, Jake had divorced her a long time ago. The reason was a mismatch in personalities. Despite getting married, she was told that he grew tired of her constant selfishness. She hadn't even told our parents. I saw you while I was just walking around here. Thought I'd annoy you a bit to vent my frustration. Our meeting in the park was truly coincidental. Given her unpredictability, I thought it might be wise to avoid letting Abby play here from now on. I married him because he was a doctor, but he earns less than I expected. And he's not good looking, quiet. I thought about returning him to you, but your contact had changed and I couldn't reach you. Luckily, he asked for the divorce first. That's terrible. You divorced for such reasons. You ended up being dumped. How sad for you. Glancing at Bob beside me, it was clear he was put off by Sarah's behavior. A natural reaction, really. But Sarah didn't seem to care about us at all. Seemingly content after sharing her current situation, she made an offer that was hard to believe. But it's perfect timing. Hey, why don't you live with me? I'm lonely being alone. What? I couldn't believe she was still saying things like that. Her self-centered behavior made me raise my voice in disbelief. There's no way I would live with you. Besides. Don't say that. Come on, I'll behave from now on, so please. How can I believe that? Just disappear from our lives already. What? Can't you listen to your older sister? Sarah seemed to think that persisting would make her get her way. Her terrible manner of speaking made me hold my head in frustration. But then, Bob spoke up. There's no way I can live with someone like you. Just disappear from our sight. Even our daughter is scared. That's harsh. What's harsh? You're the terrible one here. Please, just disappear from our lives. The usually gentle Bob wasn't there. He, visibly furious, raised his voice in anger at Sarah. Playing the victim all this time, saying whatever you want. Enough already, say something, Emily. What are you talking about? Why don't you just stop being so stubborn? If you're lonely, why don't you go back to our parents' house? I absolutely hate that. If they found out how miserable my life is. Plus, it feels like losing to you. Isn't it too late for such talk? As far as I'm concerned, whatever happens to you is none of my business. Don't you see all this is your own doing? If you've realized that, then disappear quickly. Before I knew it, Several people were watching our argument. Remember this. I'll make you regret this. She apparently disliked the attention. Sarah spat out her last words and awkwardly left the scene. A few days later, I was watching TV alone at home when my phone rang. The call was from a pay phone. Initially, I ignored it, but the persistence made me answer with trepidation. Then, from the other end of the phone, I heard a voice I recognized. It was Sarah. Emily, help me. What? All of a sudden? I have no money, can't pay rent, and have to leave my place. I tried contacting dad, friends, even Jake, but no one will help me. You're my last hope. Can we start over? Please, I won't be selfish anymore. Just let me stay at your place. Why would I help you? Sarah, in a completely different, frail voice, pleaded with me, but I had no obligation to heed her request. We met again in the park by fate, right? I thought you would help me. Cut it out. You assuming there's some connection to me is really bothersome. Anyway, I absolutely won't help you. 
I don't care about your lack of money, and no one helping you is the result of your actions. Reflect on your past deeds. But, if you contact me again, I'll consider talking to the police or a lawyer. Got it? Honestly, I doubted the police or a lawyer would act on this matter. It was all bluster. However, Sarah seemed frightened by these words. She then hastily hung up. After that, there was no further action from Sarah. I still have no idea what she's up to now. Perhaps she finally realized that no one would help her? Whatever the reason, it's no longer our concern. After all her selfish actions and the trouble she caused, I do hope she faces the consequences. My husband and I continue to live a happy life, unchanged by the past. Initially devastated by the broken engagement, I worried about what my future would hold. Now, I'm grateful to be married to a wonderful man like Bob, building a happy family together. I hope we can continue to walk towards a bright future as a family. These thoughts cross my mind as I look at our family photo.